Uh, but at seven o'clock, why don't we start the meeting? Is there anyone who wishes to engage in public participation? Hearing and seeing none. Lynn, it's my understanding that there's nothing on the public safety building tonight. Is that correct? That is correct. All right, just to let everybody know, I think Lynn sent around an email that if the final numbers, we haven't got them finalized. The, the numbers are not finalized yet. Oh, Aaron's here. Hi, Aaron. All right, Lynn, you want to start with the high school? Yes. Good evening, everyone. Um, on our agenda tonight, we have some administrative actions, uh, re uh, approval of the meeting minutes, approval of the monthly invoices, a quick budget update, and then I'll turn it over to SMMA to give you a quick update on design, and then we'll review uh, the schedule after that. First up is- Design update is update update, so that should be really good. Yes. <laughs> Do I so, hear uh, the, the minutes for August 10th, 2023? Do I hear a motion? You got to come off mute to make mute to make it. I move that we approve the August 10th permanent building committee meeting minutes. I will second that. You need discussion? Hearing none. Are there any objections to approving the August 10th, 2023 permanent building school co building committee meetings minutes? <laughs> That's a mouthful, Joe. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hearing none, they're approved. Next is the uh, monthly invoices. We Did had a, total a longer 11, list, Lynn. 11000 yeah. <laughs> $466.61 for the month. Mm. So we'll start with the easy one. I, I move that we approve left field OPM construction documents. Invoice number 26. Yeah, 26. For the sum of $133,159. I will second that. Any any discussion? Hearing none. Chip? Yes. Wayne? Yes. Mark? Yes. Phil? Yes. Jason? Yep. Tom? Yes. Aaron? Yes. Okay. Unanimous. The next one is going to be SMMA, and all of these are going to, I'll list and state all of these for a grand total, but I'll list each one separately. But it's all under the same invo invoice 0059929. Except for the last two. Yes, the last two are different. Yeah, two. yeah that's going to screw me up, isn't it? And I actually... Know. Actually, there's an there's an error there. Um, both of those last two should be the 0059932. There was a change in that in the invoice. Um, so not sixty. Not sixty. I'll fix okay, that. But I, but I don't have the sum. I'll give you the sum. Two. Okay. I guess we'll do. I don't I'm, need the whole. I don't need, I lost the screen though. Lynn. She's fixing it. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna get it fixed too. Okay. Give me a minute. Everybody hold your breath. I, I can't, actually, I can't fix it. I'm sorry. Cause it's, it's a, it's a it's insert, thing. but um, the I'm total, if we do each one individually, we'll be fine. Okay. Go ahead. You know, it will, I'll list them all individually. We don't need to worry about the total. Can you get me back up on the screen? Yeah, hang on. I got to. Oh, my gosh. Um... We're back. All right. Good. Okay. So I move for SMMA design development. 0059929 for the sum of 356,367.20. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing, Lynn? Come on, Lynn. Come on. Okay. We're open in two windows. That's what the problem uh, was. 
All right, I think you're finished, Chip. So I'll, I'll second that 0059929 for 356, 367, Correct. Now, okay. same invoice number, construction docs for 445, 459. Also second. No, we do wait, wait till the end. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, for Geotech, same invoice, 1379.40. For hazmat investigation, $720.50. For SD traffic consulting, $8,646. Another one for SD traffic consulting for $2,354. Another one for BSC Group Traffic Specialty for ten thousand oh sixty nine forty. Another one for the same group, BSC Group Traffic Specialty for the sum of seven thousand one hundred and fourteen eighty. And for permitting fees and registration for $123.20. All right. And, um, that totals $832,233.50. Thank you, Lynn. All right, I will second that whole group. Is there any discussion? Uh, I just had, oh, uh, sorry, you, Wayne. Quick question. Is this, all, is, is this all through SMMA or through subcontractors? SSMA and their subs. The yes, top two. Yes to both. <laughs> they are they are contracted through us, our specialty reimbursable consultants. Okay. All part of the all part of the budget. If you look in the right hand side, that's what's left on the different line items. As well as their base consultants under the design development and construction document uh, fees. Bill, you had a question? I was just going to offer a suggestion on this spread. I know the, the spreadsheet's probably a template, but it would be great to have a column at the end to saying what percentage of the total all these represent of completion of the different line items on this. It's just easier to understand. Like I, that's all. It, it, would be, it would be held. These are a lot of uh, line items. Thanks. Any other discussion or questions? Hearing none, Chip? Yes. Wayne? Yes. Mark? Yes. Bill? Yes. Jason? Yep. Tom? Yes. Aaron? Yes. Unanimous. I move that we approve SMMA culvert extension 059960. Not that one. That one's that wrong. It's the second number that's right. Hmm. 59932. For the sum of five thousand two hundred and fifty-two dollars. So that's for invoice number zero zero five nine nine three two. You gonna do them together? Yeah. And also for SMMA ADS culvert extension zero zero five nine nine three two for the sum of six thousand three fifty two eleven. And that totals eleven thousand six hundred four dollars and eleven cents. Great. So I will second the two of those. Any questions or discussion? I just have a the question. The eight and a half million there for that is that that total was my for question that? too, Mark. Yeah, then what that... is it? It says I hear culvert extension. The balance after the invoice. There's eight million. Yeah, well, that's the construction documents uh, line item. Does that include the construction? I would hope. Of the, so the, yeah. uh, the way this ad service was set up was that it included some of SMMA's civil and landscape services. That's why it's being cited. The 8.4 is base services um, being cited in that column. And then the ADS is a reimbursable consultant. Right. So. We, we added the culvert extension work to the construction document budget line. Oh, okay. So this is SMMA's balance after invoice. Yes. Okay. Correct. 
All right. Or construction documents. Right. Right. Any other questions or discussion? Is that eight and a half million something that we had to approve separately that I can't remember, or is that it's that's coming what, out of the project? That's contingency? the budget. That's the budget that has been approved in all amendments you've approved. All amendments you've approved. So this okay, and the extension yeah, is so the one that's going through the softball field. Uh, is yes. That what this is right. specifically? Yes. Just that section. It's yes. the same. In or, you see the so balance the, on top. See the balance on top. Yeah. So look yeah. at so look second at line. Eric Lombasso is going to turn his mic off. All right. Any other questions? Discussion? Hearing none, Chip? Yes. Wayne? Yes. Mark? Yes. Bill? Yes. Jason? Yep. <clears throat> Tom? Yes. Aaron? Yes. We'll do these separately. I move that we approve bond 122043-006, the sum of $28,333.33. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Chip? Yes. Wayne? Yes. Mark? Yes. Well, Phil? Yes. Jason? Yep. Tom? Yes. Aaron? Yes. And then I move that we approve bond building CXC Consulting PC Amendment 2 Road Consultant for the sum of 6136.67. We'll second that. Any discussion? Hearing none. Chip? Yes. Wayne? Yes. Mark? Yes. Bill? Yes. Jason? Yep. Tom? Yes. Aaron? Yes. Thank you. Unanimous. Lynn. Okay, next is a budget update. Um, we have committed 12% of the budget and expended 3% to date. Um, we are about 25% done with the 60% construction document set. However, we've only expended about 13% of that budget. But uh, Lynn, uh, yes. When you're saying that twenty five percent, that's twenty five percent of the budget progress. And I said we've uh, only spent about thirteen percent of the budget for that. And so and that's among left field, SMMA, and bond. All right. And remind me, when is the construction documents due? The sixty percent construction documents are due at the end of November. End of November. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any questions, discussion? It's sooner than that, right? That's when we submit to MSBA. Right, so it goes to estimating when? Uh, beginning of? Uh, October 18th. 18th. Yeah. All right, any other discussion? Thanks. Uh, about Joe, about, oh, okay. about this in particular or about the question of submissions? Because I, I, I have a question on submissions, but if we're going to no. get into it. Go ahead. Just uh, <laughs> so 10 18, are we going to, is tonight the review of the 60? When are we going to get a review of the 60% before the submission? Is that going to happen tonight? The submission is in November, Phil. What's October 18th? The estimate. That's, That's the when estimate. we start well, the estimating process. Oh, the okay. estimates won't be complete until the middle of... It's going to be the same sort of thing we did at the end where we'll get numbers, have a chance to look at them, and then submit. I, I Right, so we'll see the plan before the estimating is, my, I guess, my question then? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, okay. Anything else, anybody? All right, Lynn? And just ca cash flow, uh, we're still tracking below the forecasted expenditure, uh, which is good. Okay. And um, turn it over to SMMA now. Yeah, Joe, if you can enable me to share screen, that would be great. Um, we have a very brief and targeted presentation tonight. 
And I did want to um, introduce Ali Uchi. She is a graphic designer with SMMA. Um, and what we'd like to do tonight is um, talk about yet another focus group that has, you know, kind of had to wait its turn for, for formation. Um, and that is involved with um, the review of environment, environmental graphic design or EGD, which I've been doing an absolutely awful job of describing to people. So <laughs> I thought this was a good moment in the project to invite Allie, describe what it is we're trying to do and hopefully solicit um, a couple of volunteers to serve on this focus group. So with that, I will pull up my screen. And hopefully I am screen sharing at this moment. Yes. Yep. 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 Awesome. Excellent. And I will hand it over to Ali. Hi, everyone. Um, as Helen said, I'm Ali. I'm with SMMA and I'm on the graphic design team. So I work in the Cathedral House studio to bring environmental graphic design into these spaces that we design. As you can see here, we have just a, a collage to show how EGD, environmental graphic design, can really touch any part of the space. They're very visual, they're very literal. We work with the focus group and with the school and the community to figure out what content is relevant. This, this content and graphics will be in the school for a very long time, hopefully. So we work very hard to make sure that we're capturing the spirit of what Rayfield is. And then on the next slide, we have overarching high level goals. For anybody not familiar with EGD, this is a, a really good slide to, to read and digest. It, it's something we aim to do on all of our school projects. We really try to connect people to the spaces that they're in, and we also help provide wayfinding. The four key goals are connecting students and staff and community to the space, and then helping connect individual spaces to each other through a series of co cohesive system of graphic installations. We try very hard to work very closely with the architectural and interior designers and the site to make sure that we are responding to their concepts. And we have been in meetings this whole time, learning about what they have been doing, what are their challenges, what spaces can be enhanced by graphics. The third goal is creating visual and content strategies that allow for educational opportunities both in and out of the classroom. And then the fourth one is a um, usually very functional uh, necessity in schools is helping people find their way around and helping create a sense of space. To start the process, um, this is one of my favorite slides. I think it's just very simplified. We always start with three key questions. And I think with a school, especially like Wakefield, that is to serve the community and the students for decades to come. This is so important. It's something that we might have a little bit more flexibility with, with a non-public client, but with a school, really matters where we're putting things and what they're saying and what are they made out of. So that's what these three questions kind of capture is what is the content? What is the story messaging we're putting in the space? Where is it going? Is it next to our classroom? Is it next to our auditorium? How can we connect it to the programming? And then what does it look like? Not only aesthetically, but what is it made out of? We try to pay a lot of attention to materials so that they are cleanable and that they're durable. Um, the start of our whole process has always been um, creating surveys for different audiences that can use the school. And for Wakefield, that means the students, the staff, and the community. We have been doing this for a very long time, and we've kind of honed in on what questions each group responds well to. So students have, have a very different attention span than staff. We can get hundreds of, of responses from a student, from students, and a quarter of them might be very, I don't know, I don't know. And then we might only get 50 from staff, but they're very detailed, very thoughtful, very purposeful. This information really helps us build the foundation of what the graphics need to be, both what do they say, but also what do they look like. And pretty much every decision we make going forward is comes from these survey responses that we collect. So these are very high level. We want to distribute them to all three groups. I think it's important to note that if a topic of interest does come up in the first round of high level responses, we will issue another survey. So that happened in a, a previous school where we realized we really want to hone in on different textiles that students might have inside of their homes to learn about their cultures. 
So we sent out another survey asking them to take photos of any textiles or any patterns that they might see on a daily basis. So we can really send out as many we want. And it's just a great tool, great tool used to help develop the graphics. And then Helen mentioned the focus group. Um, the focus group is really key. We're not, some of us might be, I'm not from Wakefield, so I'm learning about the town as I go. And we really need to bounce ideas and direction off of a key group. Hopefully the group will be um, combined, uh, consist of various people, whether it's students, staff, community members, anything that's important to this project specifically. And the mission of the group is that they will be our sounding board. They will give us feedback. They will help us on critical milestones um, in the development of graphics for our Wakefield Memorial High School. They will help us assess whether the decisions we're making go back and support the agreed upon goals of the environmental graphics. And some of the key actions that we do with the group are in blue. Um, we recommend that a focus group is formed, usually around eight to 10 people, keeping it small. We will provide the survey response summaries to the survey. We will present what came from the surveys. They'll be available. If someone wants to read all of them, we will provide all of them. But we usually do an overview if we get a lot of responses. From the survey responses, we start to brainstorm what EGD goals for Wakefield might be. It could be that we want to celebrate all of the natural land and parks. That could be a specific goal to Wakefield. We want to get feedback on these goals from the focus group. It may resonate with you, it may not. So we want to make sure that that's in line with what people from the town are, you know, familiar with in terms of Wakefield. And then the, we go back and we start developing a contact here. And this is the content we think should be in the school. This is how we might locate them. This is what they might look like. After we get feedback on that, then we go ahead and start applying both content and style to very specific case studies that help represent the entire graphic system. And then once we get positive feedback on that, then we go back and complete any graphic that is remaining in the school. So the last slide I have is just where we are right now in the process. Um, we're right now we're hoping to distribute and collect responses for student staff and community. We did send out a beta survey for the students in May. We got about 66 responses, which isn't very high. So I am hoping that we can um, figure out uh, the best distribution plan for all, all of the groups, the community, the students, and the staff, so we can get the maximum responses that, that would, would help us. After we got through all of the responses back, we will start thinking about Wakefield goals with the environmental graphics. And then we will narrow it down to proposed themes and content informed by the surveys. We will develop a visual style and treatment. We will do research for the final content and placement of all the graphics. And we will create the graphic system for all locations. And throughout all of this, we'll be meeting probably about three times with the focus group so that they're helping us every ride, making sure we don't miss stuff and we're representing the field. So that's the environmental graphic process, that's what it is, that's where we are right now. So as Helen said, we're really hoping to start forming the focus group next and sending out the surveys. Thanks, Sally. And um, we know Doug and Amy are going to help us with, you know, soliciting staff members to participate in the group. I know Tim O'Brien has kindly volunteered himself to serve on the group. Um, and we did want to offer, um, you know, the PBC members, um, the opportunity to join the group. Um, and again, as I said, every time I brought up environmental graphic design, Joe said, I don't <laughs> do a better job of explaining what it is. So hopefully no, just, I, uh, you I just, have a better sense. Uh, no, it was, I just couldn't understand it. Maybe I just don't understand. That's probably it. No, yeah. no, I think it was me, Joe. <laughs> Hello, a couple questions. Yes. Just on how this all fits together with where we're at. So I see the focus group meeting two to three times. I hear being at 60% 60, 60 drawings by the middle of October. I hear two or three different surveys going out. What I didn't hear is how all this gets funded. Yep. We've, we've already got a budget. Do, does this come out of so, lot of items yep. like signage and different things and it's just honing what we already have line items for i'm that's what i'm confused about or yes. did we carry a line item 
in the budget for this? Where tell me how we finance yes. this? Yes, it's in the project right now. So signage is always in a project. It's it's required for wayfinding, and we have built a budget for environmental graphic design based on our experience on other projects. So it's so, in the project now, and Allie and her team will work to make sure the budget is met. And how much do we have in this budget? Uh, on you must have I known this. I did not this. tell you off the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> I will have to get back to you on that chip. Yeah, I will. Um, I will find out what we have identified. Um, we did did cite a number and gave it to the cost estimators um, at the get go in the last you, estimate. You and think then, like like Helen said, the EGD and the signage are usually budgeted together. So when you see the price, that includes all of the required code sign, the EDA signage, the building signage, the site signage. That's all like lumped in with EGD. So when you see the number, it's not just the environmental graphics that we have left to work out. And you think you're going to get all this work done by the middle of October? So the work will not be completed by 60%. It will be completed by 100%. Right. What, would you, what we do with the interior design group is we've already held locations and material. So that is already in the estimating site. We do that every project. For graphic design, a lot of times, what is on the graphic does not impact the cost. It's what materials it matter, how big is it, how many of them there are. So we start only in that very early on with Sarah Long, our interior designer, and Brian, the architect. And then we continue to develop them through 100% when they're completed. And then the package goes out as an attachment. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions or discussion? Can we, no. go back, can we go back to previous screen? To what? Sure. Previous would screen. Like, would you like to look at the examples again? You said it was number one, there was 66 responses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you so see, that who, was, who were they? That was students back in May, sure. correct, Allie? Yeah. Yep. Back in May, we sent out one survey to see how it would go. We got 66 responses. It was only students. How many were you expecting? Well, when we did, it depends for every school. The, the last high school it, it we did. It seems like a small percentage. It's a small percentage. It is very so small. So that's why you'd like to do it again. Right. Yes, we like to, when, when we did Waltham, which is a other school, we had 700 student responses. And again, I would say a fraction of them were, worked they really didn't answer anything, but a humongous chunk of them were very helpful. So compared to like 700, 66 is not a lot. So we are hoping to hone in on how these are being distributed to make sure that we get a lot more students and get engaged. Wouldn't okay, we, anything else? Wouldn't we need a higher percentage to make a decision? When this is one piece. No, no, chip, 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 can I just finish my comment? Thank well, you. It, like you were finished. I wasn't finished. I just do we need a higher percentage as far as getting any responses? This is to Ali. So I would miss. like more. I would like more. It would be great to have a better um, percentage of the student body represented. We will probably get a good result from staff and community because they are adults and they just respond a different way. If we somehow don't get a lot of responses, we have something we will discuss with the focus. We won't just come up with ideas or things on our own. We will do that in in with the focus group to make sure everything is represented in the field. Thank and you. I think Helen has said we will work with Doug and Amy to try to figure out the best distribution system possible for each group. It's not going to be the same for the three groups. Okay. Okay. Thank and you. just to give just to yeah. give a little more context with Waltham, we had 700 student responses. We had about 50 staff responses and about 50 community. So the numbers were, were pretty different, but the 50 staff and the 50 community were very thought through, like very in-depth answers, very helpful. And then we met, went to meet with the focus group and we told them what we were grabbing from these surveys, what was standing out to us. We happened to all be in agreement that those things were important to Waltham. So we would do the same thing with the Bayfield. Yeah, so what did we do different in Waltham to get 700 responses? Was it not over the summer when nobody was probably paying attention to this stuff? 
Probably. So it definitely, definitely wasn't over the summer. Um, I believe the way that Wahim distributed them to the students, I believe that they distributed them during homeroom and they had each homeroom teacher give time during homeroom for the students to answer them. I don't know how the 66 responses were collected during this beta test. We can probably ask Doug and Amy how the, that beta survey went out last night. It could have something to do with the time of the year it was as well. I just I would like to, to, I would like to let, push the issue and, and see if we can do a lot better on the response rate. Yep, yep. I agree. that's our goal too. Okay, yep. thanks, Helen. Sure. Um, I also um, looked at the estimate and we had an allowance of 350000 for this. Oh, thank you, Lynn. Bill, you had your hand up? I was just going to ask on top of all that, is there an incentivize the response for the surveys? Is there any money and would pay it to get a gift card and get it to people's attention because six it's like six percent it's like a thousand on average right students in the high school generally so you know we got to do something to incentivize the survey if we're going to go through all the effort to do it we, there needs to be equal effort to try to get some back so i appreciate everyone's work on this thanks Bill. jonathan thanks uh, j just a, a suggestion that uh, it might make sense to include uh the town's uh, communications manager, Jen McDonald, in, in mm. the focus groups, uh, just so that as we think about like the design aesthetic and the visual style, if there are ways in which we can kind of uh, highlight or mirror or reflect some of the way, you know, some of the ways that sort of other town materials are put together, that might be a, a nice tie in. Oh, that's a great idea. Thank you, Jonathan. Anybody else have any questions or discussion? Does any member of the PBC wish to be involved in the focus groups? Focus group, just one more. <laughs> I'll sign up. It sounds uh, pretty interesting. Oh, okay. Great. Thanks, Mark. Thank Thanks, you, Mark. I'm happy to participate as well. All right. Wonderful. Darling. Thank you, Jonathan. Anybody else? All right. Thank you. Great. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you. All right, Helen. That's all we have. Okay, Lynn. Lynn, you talking, Lynn? Hello. Hello, Lynn. I was talking away. Sorry. Yes, yeah, all good. <laughs> Let us know that, how it went. <laughs> yeah. This is a slide that we showed last month, but we left it in for this month because there's a lot of relevant dates that are uh, ahead of us. And um, we're concentrating on trying to get through all of the um, permitting and um, commissions and board uh, approvals uh, prior to the uh, completion of 60%. I know this is a silly question, but are we anticipating any negative pushback from the abutters that we haven't already heard at these hearings? Hearings haven't started yet. No, I know that, but obviously there's been there's been a lot of people who expressed a lot of opinions in the last two years about the location of the school. I'm just curious, you know, this this was I didn't see it in the paper yet. I probably missed it though. We do have an upcoming um, a butters meeting. Okay. Um, we are in the process of gathering addresses for all the butters and getting the notifications put out. But um, hope we we will have met with them before the end of the um, conservation commission process, and um, so hopefully, hopefully we will. Um, there won't be any issues. Okay. Cool. Mailings should be going out to a us tomorrow, so they'll either see it over the weekend or early next week in their mailboxes. And when is the butters meeting? Uh, Tuesday, September 26th at the auditorium in the high school. Okay. And, and on Zoom. Just one quick question. I saw under the ZBA that um, you were filing by the week of November 11th. Did that happen? You mean September 11th, Chip? To the building inspector in hopes of a 
getting a negative or um well whatever it no. Didn't happen. <laughs> no it did not and we will we need to update the list so when is that going to happen uh the team is working on it now and i will have to get you that date chip Okay, so you're not going to be in front of the ZBA in October as anticipated? No. Okay. Unlikely. So, yeah, no, it's impossible if you haven't filed this week. <laughs> Understood. Yeah, okay. And uh, Helen, as far as you know, is the 19th is still on for the hearing for the conservation as commission? Far, yes, as far as we know, we are tracking that date. Okay, and uh, just for the committee members, I'll... I'll be attending just to uh, represent the uh, permanent building committee at the at the hearing. Is that a Zoom or in person, Joe? It's a Zoom. Okay. All right, Lynn. Anything else? Anybody have anything else on the uh, schedule? Just to wrap it up, our next um, PBC meeting is October twelfth. And again, as I said, we'd be next month, we're really focusing on completing all of these uh, regulatory agency approvals and also putting together some early procurement packages. Uh, Craig, you raise your hand, You, Craig DiCarlo. Yes, uh, sorry, uh, this is out of turn. Um, I did see on the agenda, there's an item about budget revision request number six. Maybe I missed it, but I don't think I heard any action on that. Did we inadvertently skip over that then? We don't have a budget revision request on this project. There we go. All right. Just want to make sure we don't miss something. Thank you. Yeah, no. All right. All right, you want to go to that last screen again, Lynn, the schedule? Yes. Hold on. So are we going to see on the October 12th, is that when we're going to get a like a final look? Do we get a final look at the whole high school design? I don't know how these big projects work in that regard. So like, or does it just go to estimate? We just assume the last one we saw is close enough to go to estimating or do we have to approve anything to go to estimating? Lynn, Helen? Well, I mean, we do have... I mean, we have been working in the working groups on finalizing a few things. We can go through the list of things that we've made some final decisions on um, prior to going out to estimating. We can do that at the October 12th meeting. Yeah, well, I, mean, the, I, mean, the I mean, really all we're doing is refining what we had in design development. Yeah. We're not, we haven't made any major changes or anything like that. We're just refining. So, um, we can give you one final look visually of the, yes. of the building. And if you guys want to do a page turn of the 60%, we can do that at some point as well. Um, but I know SMA has a lot of visual um, images of the building that have, have further progressed that we can show at the October 12th meeting. I, I think that would be appropriate to do, Helen. Sure, we can absolutely do that. Do that. We'll need, we will need to figure out a time to do a a detailed page turn of both the plans and the specs prior to 100%. Yeah. And, and yeah, can we don't need to like do that it. not be at night? Like, I and, and I'm considering other PBC schedules and stuff, but can like page turn meetings that are going to need energy and, you know, daylight <laughs> in general, like, is that ever possible to have a daytime meeting for something like that? Joe? Certainly. What do we I just need quorum to have something to right? You just need quorum to hold a meeting. Yeah, we'd have to we'd have to give public notice of it. That's all. Yeah. I know it's tough because where everyone's working and everything, but yeah, I know. if possible, it'd be great to consider that with the group. I right. mean it's also what we also have done in the past is had the set of drawings at the um for the Galvin, we had the set of drawings at um Town Hall. I forget where we had them. Right at the hall. We put them at the town hall first for a conference room, didn't we? Uh, yeah. I thought public safety. I think they were in public safety, but we I think they were. Could have been either. I think they were in public safety, as I remember, but I'm yeah. not. I don't recall. That was a few years ago. <laughs> the the, the, pro the problem with having them there and no one guiding us is like the same reason there's dumbbells at the gym, but I don't go unless a trainer's meeting me there. So like, 
you know, it, it's like it's great to have someone guide you through these things rather than being relied to show up and having to look through a huge. I can imagine the set of plans on this building is going to be gigantic, right? We're, 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 uh, Lynn, what are we are we talking like in November or December? What are we talking? Well, I would have thought maybe in November, um, but in case we needed to do any value engineering or anything, we could do that at the same time. But um, it sounds to me like you're wanting to see it before it goes to the estimators. I don't think we need to see 60%. I don't think there's no. Yes. I'm, talking about, I'm talking about before we go out to final bid. Yeah, Chip was talking about 100%. Oh, okay. So I just that want would probably be when in December, January. When would that be? No, well, okay. So there's we uh -huh. have a few bid packages. There's an uh, there's an early procurement package for culvert and electrical equipment that is going out soon. That's equipment only. And yeah. then in on January twenty sixth is a uh, bid package. I'll call it two that has site work, elevators, steel, and concrete. Um, and then the final bid package is early April. So would would we want to do the page turn prior to that January uh, bid date? I'm wondering if it wouldn't be a bad idea to have a, uh, yes, let's set that bid package uh, is more substantial with those items. And it's probably a good um, foray into doing a page turn with this group. So I would say and that's, yes. And that's that package is based on the 90% construction documents. And I think that would be a good time to do the page turn because then that gives you a little time to pick up anything that, that somebody might notice. Well, when we get to that in January, maybe it might be an idea to do it on a Saturday. You know, so Phil doesn't fall asleep at night. You know, when we're doing it, it's just more. It's it, I, I'm I'm physically awake. My brain is asleep by eight, <laughs> to look at plans for three hours at eight o'clock at night is not does not behoove anyone. I'd say. Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. Then maybe we can do, work something out for a Saturday. Three yeah, hours, or, or leaving my weekends alone too, Joe would be nice too. It would be great if we could figure out a work day uh, uh, meet during the day to have the page turn. Is my yeah, preference. but that might be hard for members of you know right. working. Why? You, why you, I, I, I understand. I'm, we'll get to that. We'll we'll figure out the time when the time comes. Exactly. Yeah, we'll figure it out. The other question I have is when do we start working with the school on FF and E? Uh, looking at tables, looking at chairs, looking at classroom stuff, looking yeah, about yeah, about a year before opening. So we've got a we're a bit of a ways out. So if we're opening in January of twenty seven, then January of twenty six. It's a ways to go. Really? Okay. Yep. So we just mm -hmm. hope we just hope the budget's good. Yep. Okay. That's fine. Well, sometimes with that long of a time frame, you might get escalation and different things like that. I mean, in years past, you could pretty much count on the budget holding, but I'll right. say okay. in the last couple of years, we've had some, we've had to deal with some escalation on FF and E and tech, and well, not necessarily as much technology as FF and E costs. Okay. But Mary? typically, that we come out of the owner's contingency if there was a change in them. All right. Okay. All right. So the next meeting is going to be October twelfth. Are there and any that's questions it. in our discussion? Joe. Joe. Yep. Because you made fun of me, I'm going to ask questions until midnight now. So. Um, <laughs> how about it, how about it's already one forty four my time? Oh, we're right. Are you are you in the UK? <laughs> no. So Switzerland. I oh, think nice. we should. Why do you have a background? Have the Alps in the back. Listen, real quick. The comment about <laughs> uh, from uh, Jonathan Shines about Jen McDonald is great, but like I feel like that there should be reimbursement to the town for her time or something out of the budget if we're going to use town resources to help. You know, if not, just ask a high school yeah. art teacher <laughs> or high school to help the survey communication prep. Like I feel like rather than throwing it into the town's lap. Um, it should okay. come out of the budget or reimburse this the is, budget. This, Bill, this is a focus group. It's going to meet two or three times. Uh, 
yeah, I know. Sure but thing. it's oh, I, I thought the comment was more about you utilizing her to craft communication. No, 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 for input she's only. Input she's only. going to go just to a focus group two to three times. Yeah. That's what if she wants to. That's right. That's yeah, my my so my intent time. behind it was just for her to be sort of as a you know kind of consultant to the focus group, you know, just so that you know she can kind of share whatever our design aesthetics are for the town and. We'll let um, Allie's team kind of run with that. Okay, thanks. Is there anything else? Motion to adjourn. Ah, and I, hate, I believe there's a second, and all in favor, click that Back. meeting button.